so as I mentioned, this whole uh, first lesson, the, the uh, first half of this class, is going to be all about water. And it tends to break almost every trend there is of molecules. So the first one I want to talk about is the density of water. It doesn't do what you would think it would. Water becomes less dense. It actually gets smaller. It contracts. Sorry, it, it expands. Sorry, And the mass is spread out over a bigger volume. And that drives down its density as it goes from a liquid uh, to a solid. And that has a huge effect on life on Earth. We wouldn't have the type of life we have if water followed the normal trend of getting more dense as it freezes. Now, you see this property of water. If you have a glass bottle, you put water in and you freeze it, it expands and it can break the glass. Okay? So you really can't freeze water in a rigid container. It'll expand it. And I'm drawing a lake. Okay. And this will be our surface of the water. Okay. And if water was like most substances on Earth, when they go from liquid to solid, most substances get more dense. And if water followed the trend of most substances, once you've got a little chunk of ice that froze, it would fall to the bottom of your lake. And you would see lakes freezing from the bottom and slowly would build up if it was more dense. But that's not what we see. I think life on Earth would actually end if water behaved like that. Water is less dense, so when water freezes, we get this layer on the top. Okay? Water wants ice will float on the top of water. And as a lake freezes, it will freeze from the top down. So the ice will get thicker and thicker and thicker and not fall. If water didn't behave like this, lakes would freeze from the bottom up, which maybe wouldn't change life on Earth, but all our oceans would freeze from the bottom up and our massive oceans would freeze from the bottom of the Atlantic or the Pacific and slowly work their way up and eventually freeze right to the top. And the sunlight would maybe melt the top of the ocean, but would never melt the bottom. And all our oceans would be solid ice and, the, and our planet would just be totally different. It wouldn't be able to, to be the way it is. So that quirk of water is, is crucial um, to keeping our oceans liquid. So you have to remember the density of water when it freezes goes down due to its expansion and spreading out. And hopefully you can remember, hopefully everybody's seen something freeze and maybe seen that plastic bottle be stretched. Has anybody actually frozen water in glass and paid the price because it broke when they put it in the freezer? If you haven't done it, uh, I wouldn't try. We also see a very unusual boiling point uh, with water. Compared to other molecules of similar masses, water has an extremely high boiling point, okay. allowing it to be a liquid at our sort of earthly room temperatures. We're going to look at the mass of one water molecule and compare it to some other molecules of similar masses. So the, the most common mass for hydrogen is one. We went through the hydrogen, deuterium, tritium, those three isotopes. But the most common mass is one AMU, or one atomic mass unit for each of the hydrogens. For oxygen, the most common is 16 AMU. So we've got two hydrogen. The most common is one unit each. And then we've got 16 
mass units from the O, so in total, 18 atomic mass units would be the most common water molecule, the most common hydrogen, and the most common oxygen. Okay. And if you look at something like nitrogen, okay, which this room is filled with nitrogen, but nitrogen is very different from water. It's a gas. Okay. Nitrogen is two Ns. Okay. Each N is about 14. Okay. So nitrogen is 2 times 14, or 28 atomic mass units. Nitrogen has more mass per unit than water. Okay. And I could have done this with oxygen in this room. Okay. Two O's together. It has a mass much more than water, okay? but they're gases. Okay? Water has, for its mass, has a very high boiling point. Okay? I'm going to talk about uh, talk about what property drives this on the next slide. Um, but it's that it's a stickiness. One water molecule really wants to stick to another, and it's so sticky to each other that it pulls it from a gas into a liquid at room temperature. Okay? So only imagine if all the water was a gas. At this temperature, uh, I couldn't exist, you couldn't exist, we'd have no lakes. Okay? Most of the biology is water-based, or pretty much all cells, animals, it's all water-based. If it was gases, uh, nothing would exist. Okay? So the stickiness of water creates this very unique uh, boiling point that certainly affects life on Earth. Okay? One more slide talking with water, and I'll explain that stickiness a little bit better. Uh, but you see it in the surface tension of water. So it's the same reasoning, the boiling point and the surface tension. Okay? Water molecules want to stick uh, together, or they'll actually stick to other polar substances. Okay? Other things do this, not just like water. When you're done writing, I want to dive into what? What do I mean by that word polar? Does anybody want to make a stab at what I might be trying to talk about, about the word polar or what it would mean in general? Yes? Yeah, the, the op, yeah, certain, something that's polar definitely have two opposites. What's maybe a, an earthly example of something that's polar? Yeah, our whole Earth has two poles. There's a North Pole and a South Pole, and they're kind of they're opposites to each other. Okay, so we're using that same type of terminology with polar in terms of uh, that's magnetic polar. We're dealing with electric instead of magnetic, opposite charges instead of opposite magnetic poles. So instead of north-south, we're going to refer to polar as a positive end and a negative end. Okay? That's the polarity that I'm referring to. Positive and negative instead of north and south that maybe you're used to. Okay? So water is polar. It has a positive end and a negative end, and that causes the positive end of one water to stick to the negative end of the other. That causes its really high boiling point. It's so sticky that if you're a tiny little bug, you can actually walk on the surface of water and the water molecules are held together enough that the bug doesn't fall between the waters. Okay? Now, obviously, we can't do that. I'm too heavy to walk on top of water, but bugs can. You can get a coin to float or maybe a paper clip to sit on top of that water. It also causes a scientific concept of meniscus that definitely uh, it comes up in measuring devices that we use when we go to measure water. I'm going to draw a beaker. Now, if you put water 
in any type of measuring device that also is polar, that the material that makes the measuring device has some positive and negative in it, you'll get this meniscus effect. Okay. Has anybody noticed what water does if you look through it and it's just in a small tube? Is it perfectly flat? Does anybody bake and have to measure water? Okay. Even if you hold it still, if you have a, a narrow measuring device, you'll notice that the water curves up on the two sides. And then it's flat, and then it curves up. Okay. Water, if it's in a device that has positive and negative ends, the water wants to get sucked up to the side or attracted to the part of the glass that has no water attaching it. Now, it only goes so high, but this is meniscus, this curvature of water when you put it in most containers. And we see this in, in most of the measuring. When we go to measure any water-based liquid in the chem lab, you will see this curvature in the measuring device. And all these devices are designed that when you read them, you read them from the very bottom of that curvature. The narrower the device, the more curved it gets. So we have something called a burette that we'll use in grade 11. And it's a long, narrow tube meant to measure uh, the volume of any aqueous solution, and the curvature is really pronounced. Okay. The whole aqueous solution curves, okay. and we measure the very bottom of that. Okay. I'll say measure the bottom of the meniscus, okay. meniscus being this curving you get of any polar liquid when you put it in a lot of a container that has some polarity to it. So let's end this discussion about water, but what exactly is causing this stick together or stickiness? I want to talk about that positive and negative end uh, of water. I have to use some Chem 20 skill. So drawing the shape of water is something that you will learn how to do next year. Okay? I kind of introed it a bit. We just use electron dot diagrams. So I'm going to go through that. But, but you will do this next year. Oxygen is in group six. Okay. So it has six dots, six valence electrons in its outer energy level. And we put six dots in Lewis dot diagrams. Okay. And where we use these next year is to predict shapes of molecules and connections of molecules. Okay. So there's the six, two pairs and two singles. Okay. Electrons always come in pairs. Next year, we'll call them orbitals, a pair being in an orbital. Okay. Hydrogen has how many, a hydrogen atom has how many dots? One. It's in group one, and when it's an atom, it's neutral, so it still has that dot. Okay. So we get water, which is H2O. Okay. One of the H's with one dot can pair up with one of the singles in water and one can pair up with the other. And we get this kind of shape to water. Okay? We kind of have a bent bottom to it, where my hydrogen would be the end of my two fingers. Now, I, I've mentioned before, uh, the atom, the non-metals, way more strongly are attracted to electrons than our metals. We see this where these guys lose electrons because they don't hold them very tightly. All, the, all of group one can lose its one electron and become plus one. All of group two can lose its electron to become plus two because it doesn't hold electrons very tightly. Fluorine has seven valence electrons and it really wants to pull in electrons so it can pull in its one missing one. So these guys have a strong pull, but metals not very much of a pull. Oxygen, being a non-metal, has way more pull of electrons than hydrogen does. So we say that the water end is a bit negative, and the H, in between the H's, that end is a bit positive. I'm just going to turn my water so I can show the two ends a little bit better. And I replace the two dots with a dash. It's something we'll do next year. You'll see these shapes in your book, but you don't have to draw them. And you'll, the dashes just mean a pair of electrons. Okay. 
we've got this negative hydrogen end, and we've got this positive, slightly positive hydrogen end. And that's going to cause the stickiness. Okay. Now, we need a not notation to put in the slight bit. Okay. Because if I just put a minus, you might think, okay, well, that's minus one, a full electron. Okay. It's not a full charge, it's just a little bit negative. So we use a little delta symbol. That weird symbol in chemistry we use to mean little bit. Okay, I'll do a big version. This end is a little bit negative, that end a little bit positive. Okay. And that's what causes our waters to stick together. So one water would sit like that. The O of another water is attracted to the positive bottom and the negative top, those two are attracted. Okay. And this happens over and over again in three dimensions. And when water freezes, this helps give a rigid structure, that beautiful snowflake structure, repeating pattern you can see when water freezes. You see this locked in and how one water connects to another okay. in a very similar pattern. But no two snowflakes are alike. You freeze water, there's always a little bit of dust, there's some contaminant. And that makes you know, every snowflake slightly different. It's not the water, it's the other stuff that's in there. Okay. So that's our, our stickiness. I'll just end with our you know, slightly negative, slightly positive, okay, slightly negative. There's the opposite poles, opposite polarity attracting each other. Slightly positive, slightly negative. This, low, this keeps water a liquid, gives it high surface tension, affects its density. Water's a, a pretty unique substance. Um, good thing uh, it is.